Hi, everybody. Welcome to the business podcast that is Revitalize Meet, where I get the opportunity to meet business owners, business professionals, and key influencers from across the global business network. And today I've got the great pleasure to be welcoming two ladies who are extremely specialized in the art of saving you time and money with your business. They've been part of Blue Ninja now for the last few years, since 2019. Can you please welcome with us today at the Revitalize Meets podcast, the one, yes, but the onlys, that is Julie Taylor and Louisa Stewart. Louisa, Julie, how are you both doing today? Yeah, good, thank you. Thanks Wonderful. <laughs> Superb. Now, this is live from the Netherlands, if I understand that correctly. Yeah. It is indeed. Would you mind telling everybody who's joined us today to listen and to watch a little bit about your business and also your business journey so far? Well, I'll start. Um, my name is Louisa Stewart and I am the founder of, of Blue Ninja Consulting, um, which was the UK part of Blue Ninja, which um, I started in 2013 um, due to burnout. So I uh, was working with an NGO and and just wanted a change and the consulting part of, of administration was born for me and uh, wasn't very familiar. Um, there is now a world of virtual administration that you can find, but sort of 10 years ago, um, administration consulting wasn't that popular because there wasn't um, a lot of incentive to bring people on board, but now it's such a popular area. Um, so Blue Ninja, um, developed from, from that concept. Um, I moved to Germany in 2015, I believe it was. Um, with Blue Ninja, I worked from Germany and the UK. I was a trailing spouse, as Julie also is. We'll talk about that a little later. Um, and then moved to the Netherlands in, in 2018, where um, the new concept of what Blue Ninja is now was developed. So uh, very exciting stuff. But um, I uh, found in my business journey that um, I, I found loneliness was a problem. Um, so that was one area that we'll, we'll get into a little bit more as well. Um, and I just found that having that network of people was so important, um, particularly internationally, um, which is fantastic why, why this podcast is so important too, to link and nurture those communities together. Um, just a little bit on what administrators uh, well, the meaning behind Blue Ninja, you know, administrators are like ninjas. We're in the background working efficiently and quietly. And then things just happen. I mean, people don't realize um, how much work goes into administration. They just see the end result, which always looks seamless and wonderful. So, you know, you don't always see a ninja, but you know, we've been there. And that's part of the ethos of, of what Julie and I um, have connected uh, with Blue Ninja. And yeah. could you tell me a bit about, especially coming up to Julie now as well, is that, could you tell me a little bit how you both met? Because I think that's through a social media platform mm -hmm. as well, yeah? Yeah, definitely. So I moved to the Netherlands in uh, late 2018 as trailing spouse. Um, I came along with my husband's job. Um, so I came to, commented on a, lo a local Facebook post about someone from Scotland, uh, where I just moved from. Um, Louisa commented on the post because she's also lived in Scotland previously and she invited me out for coffee. So I was thinking, well, it's daylight, you know, you've got to get out there and meet people. It's a bit strange. I don't know this lady, but we went out and we had a bit of a chat and um, we just clicked. Um, she was looking to expand her business. I hadn't quite decided what I was going to do with myself. Um, I thought about traveling backwards and forwards to Edinburgh. Um, but didn't really feel like it was embracing my new life in Holland. So we started working together on some client work and realized that we got real complementary skills, um, business operation, processes, process improvement, stuff we're really passionate about. Um, so the Blue Ninja Business Support Partnership started at the beginning of 2019 uh, with clients that Louisa had, and that was us. We were off on our journey. It's funny how much it's the power of social media. Mm. And once you use a couple of little keywords, Scotland, a bit of common ground, a bit mm. of common interest that really starts to gel and dovetail it all together, really. And it's now surprising that you're both in the same area of, the, of yeah. the Netherlands as well. So it's great to see that. How have you adapted? Now, we've had many things happening over the last 24 months. 
certain things that we don't want to speak about too much about online, right? Mm -hmm. But in regards to your business, and especially now being a lot remote business, how have you adapted yours in the last 24 months? What's been the biggest changes for you? Oh, biggest changes and biggest challenge really has been keeping um, a pipeline of clients. You know, the ones we started out with were a word of mouth which was excellent, you know, it was, a, it was really appreciated that those people um, supported us and moved forward with us. Um, you know, we focused all of our time and effort on them, but then the work dried up and, you know, it's a common story right now that people are saying, you know, they, they had these consistent um, client work streams that all disappeared, you know, within a year. So you know, we had to look around for new clients. Yeah. And some of this client work came to its natural conclusion, um, such as a client receiving the funding, which was the goal of working with us, which is you know excellent. Um, we then had to go out and find more customers by networking. And as you know, it's a slow burn. It takes time to build networks and relationships, especially in a new country. Um, but we did use the quiet months to develop other offerings as well. Mm. And, and oh, our biggest achievement despite the pandemic, the P word, um, mm. you know, we've managed to keep going. We've lost clients, they've scaled back, they've changed the way they wanted to work with us at very short notice in some, some instances, you know, but we've worked long hours to make things happen for them. You know, we've learned new tools, uh, which we've managed to formulate into work packages and really invested in our own learning and abilities and capabilities. Have you found as well, though, working in the Netherlands as well, and especially now, are you getting local business or is it a mix of both, would you say, local and online? Finally, um, we've just signed up our, our first Dutch client. Um, yeah, it's Brilliant. been a long time coming and it has been a real sort of um, ebb and flow of we've not ignored Dutch people Dutch clients but we are English speakers so when it gets down to the nitty-gritty and things you know there's a deadline they're going to revert to the you know mother tongue it's just what happens so we have had some inquiries in the past but it's not quite got there um and also people getting to know us and, and what we're about so but yeah I mean we've had some other fab achievements as well and um, we've been nominated and finalists in four awards um, in both the Netherlands and the UK. Um, great opportunities for exposure and awareness of what an injury can offer. But last week, we won our very first award. Um, that was from Corporate Vision, uh, leading providers of international virtual business support 2021. So I really chuffed with that. Yay. Yay, absolutely superb. And it's great when that comes to fruition because of the work that you've been putting mm. in in, the, in the, the ground upwards, in other words, and, and embracing your local areas. And talking about challenges, talking about achievements, what's been your biggest challenge that you've had to overcome? And has that turned into an achievement for you? Is it that award has, has been part of that, would you say? I think uh, trying to, to pivot and adapt. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we've, we've been trying to place ourselves in front of new clients and new opportunities. We've done a lot of training. So we've had coaching in the last year to help us grow together to work out where our weaknesses were. So we were looking back at our business planning and sort of addressing our, our SWOT analysis of, well, you know, what are now our threats and weaknesses? You know, how do we improve those? So coaching really added a lot of value to us and talking through, we were talking for months about what we were trying to achieve. Were we going the right direction? You know, how do we, how do we support people the way that we uh, want to support them with that value that we, we drive to with every um, piece of client work that we have? Um, and, you know, looking for other opportunities as well, like passive income, you know, how do we um, explain what we do to other people um, who, who might not become clients? So there's been a lot of development and growth from both of us over the last year. And I think that has been quite successful in terms of, of re-energizing ourselves. You know, we, we did not close down um, because we lost our clients. We've actually re-energized with new client work. So that's been really positive. And I think as well, it's about what you see people should be doing, but they don't always identify it. So we started out as process warriors and it's just like, oh, process is yuck. It's just like, <laughs> everything's great when it works, but you've got to be so far into your business journey before you take the time out to, to focus on those. Apart from that, you just muddle through and keep going. So it's about 
turning you know the tables round to what what they want to hear what they is their key pain point rather than what we know is the long term you know foundation will support them going forward thanks for sharing that and before we go on the next part of it what i would like to know is that how long did it take you to develop that message was it maybe over a month was it two months because you're consistently now delivering a message online about what you do with blue ninja so how long, just before we get to the next question, how long did that take you to develop between the two of you, Julie and Louisa? Oh, I don't know. It's just a sort of ongoing thing. Um, I mean, as Louisa mentioned, you know, we've had some coaching, which really helped because we did so many things. And if we don't know it or don't do it, we'll find somebody to help or we'll learn it. So it's that whole, we do lots of things. There's not much we don't do, so which doesn't really help. No. So they really <laughs> helped us to say, right, so what are you going to do for me? So um, I think um, the outside challenge of having a coach really helped. Yeah. Um, and if it's not something that you're ready to do is the collaboration, which you can obviously do through networking, is even if you're not in the same industry or even if you are in similar industries, I just say in, can you just read my mission statement? Does that make sense? Would somebody understand that? So it's just about, you know what you're saying, but do people understand that? So it's... Um, using your network but also you know stopping and checking as well so we do have planning sessions throughout the year as well and just go is this working or is it not do people not understand i would say that it took around probably three months to redevelop uh, we had the time as well um there was it was a downtime for us so we really utilized that downtime um but along the way, we met different people. And even was it about a month or two ago, Julie, we met another person that inspired us for another part of yeah, our business. Okay. So, yeah. yeah, so, you know, that was a year after we'd come up with the with the revised concept. So we've always we've always agreed that um, growing and changing is not a bad thing in business. You know, you really need to be on mm -hmm. your toes and and sort of work towards opportunities. Um, we have embraced that together. I think it's it's you know, I'm, I'm not sitting at home going, oh, I don't want to do that. It's like, well, let's talk through, let's let's brainstorm what that means for us. And uh, and it, it really has helped that we've been in line together on what our goals have been. Um, you know, it's it's been very fortuitous, I think, with Julie and myself that, you know, we, we have a long-term strategy that complements each other. So, you know, in a way that we're not clashing or, you know, getting frustrated by our direction, we're, we're very um, forward together. Um, and then we we split up sort of what we want to do together. So, you know, Julie's um, very much in the networks and talking to people and engaging. I'm much more into the sort of video editing and the and the software and development side of it. So, again, we complement each other and and, you know, we make sure that we cross over where we're needed, but also then we can diverge our skills too to focus on what we really enjoy. To understand where you both your skill sets lie, but also at the point what you've also done and and testament to you is both is that you've educated, educated, and educated everybody mm. in regards to what you do. And it's something I talk about quite a lot is that people know what you know. So when they're talking to other people, they know how to explain it. That's when you know you've delivered your message the right way. When someone can explain what you do, yeah. just like you would do it. That's when the penny sort of drops on that. Um, one thing I just want to touch on as well is the is the belt packages. So, you know, myself, I do martial art, et cetera, as well. But it's what are your belt packages? Because we were talking about that previously to today. Would you mind just expanding a little bit what, what the belts are all about? Yeah, I mean, we started out with our ninjas. Um, we've got ninja skills that we, we've now put into packages. So we've got five ninjas. So we've got project, process, admin, report, and ninja me, which is all about USP. But then we realize those skills, if they're put into packages, they're a bit more sort of deliverable and you know what you're going to get out of the process. Louisa, do you want to talk us through your packages? Yeah, sure. So we've got we've got five belts at the moment. And um, this the conversation with the belts came from someone who, who loves... Um, martial arts as well so he's like why aren't you utilizing this this fantastic ninja element and we're like yes how do we do that <laughs> so we we quickly worked out how to um use the belts to explain the business so we're using white belt um which we identify as a discovery call it's it's sort of a, a lower level and please forgive us if the belts are out of order <laughs> we, we, <I> <laughs> we we went with the color 
the, <laughs> the, the correct order. So I, I, I'm not quite sure if we've got them around the right way, but uh, <laughs> um, so the discovery call starts you off. It's to get you thinking about um, what your business does in detail and, and both Julie and myself um, have different questions that we like to ask. You know, we're probing for, you know, what's your what's your user journey with your clients? Uh, what what is your business striving to do, et cetera? So we have that as our first point of, of entry. And it just helps people who don't really know much about Blue Ninja to get a bit of a sense of working with us without a commitment, essentially. Sure. And also people just need a little bit of advice or a little bit of focus to then move forward. So that's what our white belt discovery call does. And then an orange belt is looking at your foundations. You know, it's looking at business planning. It's looking at tools and software and asking questions like, you know, do you have three tools that do exactly the same thing? Why do you have those tools? You know, are you missing a tool that that would really grow your user journey in a way that, you know, your information flows seamlessly, but often people aren't looking at tools that way, whereas Julie and I are always looking at, at you know, new software and how um, people engage with each other through, through tools. So the Orange Belt is great for building foundations. We then move into um, more of our uh, consistent work with clients. So Blue Belt, Brown Belt and Black Belt are all about nurturing your community, you know, getting your stuff together and then, you know, just getting stuff done. Um, Cause often with small businesses, particularly um, they, they either procrastinate on points in the business or um, ignore it because it feels too big to solve. So we're trying to look at how to help people get past some of the um, pain points that they have in business, but also streamlining and, and really helping business owners you know, move forward comfortably and, and, you know, with, with confidence. Absolutely superb. And I think when you've got the belt wise, you're not too far away in fairness, that's still okay when using the belt, but I think it's a great way of really wrapping up what you do in each one. And it's very straightforward. It's very crystal clear. It's completely transparency. And I think really hats off to you for putting that sort of structure together because it's relevant to many people. Many, many connections will understand how that works. So thank you for sharing that, Louisa and Julie. Um, we're looking at other people in business who are watching today and listening today. We also look at the golden top three tips of advice. What would be your golden tips of advice, three of them, to somebody who's looking to start their own business or either someone who's looking to save time for their business? What would you share with them? Ooh, I've got my first one is get your finances in place and keep a good track of them have a plan for how you're going to monitor money in, money out, opportunities, products, all that sort of stuff. So, you know, setting up the foundations um, for financial tracking is so much, you know, so critical from, from day one. Um, and researching, you know, is there a demand for your product or service? You know, that's my second tip because um, if you're providing a, a service that, that people aren't actually wanting or it's not capturing that, that imagination of people, then you're not going to go very far. So, you know, you need to assess what customers want, what their pain points are, you know, what, what are you resolving for them? So, um, you know, really research and, and talk through what you're, what you're, you know, what you're planning to do. There was a, um, a podcast I was listening to a while ago and it said, don't be scared to tell people what your ideas are. Don't tell them everything, but by talking it through, uh, like we did with the belts, you know, um, you will get a better framework for, for whether that idea could be successful or not. Yeah. yeah. And I'd say the, the final one is around clarity about what you will and won't provide. This takes time, which is, is why um, we went on a journey starting out with process and procedures. Uh, something we know people need, but they don't necessarily go searching for in the market. Um, but if you do a SWOT um, and some type of business plan at the beginning of setting up your business, you'd be clear on what your strengths are and what you like to do. But then look at the weaknesses are and what you don't like to do and just be really clear about what your boundaries are. There's no point saying yes, yes, yes to everything when you're just like, oh, I don't really know how to do that. or I hate doing that. It's just like just be clear on what you will support with and what's really not in your comfort zone or you're not very good at. Some great pointers there, especially when you look at the SWOT analysis. 
know, your strengths, weaknesses, opportunities and threats that you want to put into place. And that many people forget about so much of not putting a business plan together, uh, mm-hmm. of knowing what their first six months or 12 months is going to look like once it starts to mold and shape the ideas that you're really pushing forward, because that's the make or break. It's the first the first couple of years when somebody's sort of just starting up. So some great pointers there. And thank you for sharing that, Louise. And thank you, Julie, for sharing that also. Um, we talk about learnings. We talk about self-reflection. I mean, I read a lot of books each week. I go through one and pick up some great golden nuggets. And I go back over some older books that I've read in the past. Um, what's been your sort of learnings over the, the sort of past, maybe the last six months? Has it been from books? Has it been from training? Has it been from other connections would you like to share those with everybody's watching and listening today yeah I mean for me it's got to be networking um how else would Louise and I have met um how else would we have met our business coach our marketing support even meet newly um both online (laughs) yeah both online and offline have the benefits um here we've got a language challenge and not all you know events are suitable for us but the opportunities that have come via the pandemic has meant that we've been able to network in the UK and beyond. Um, it's how we met our South African contact who we've been running monthly Facebook lives for over a year now. Um, and it's that whole, oh, we're not really competitors. How can we collaborate? And she's like, I'm, I'm wanting to do Facebook lives, but I just don't want to sit the camera and talk to myself. So that's what we do every month. We've got that commitment. Um, so networking, it takes time and effort, but without it, how are you going to get to know people? How are they going to get to know you? And what I did at Christmas, <laughs> <laughs> what I did at Christmas last year is um, I sat for, we had Julie and I um, purposefully closed Blue Ninja for two weeks at Christmas. Um, our clients tend to be um, uh, slowed down anyway. And it's that that thinking and reflecting time that we really need to have. So we purposely make sure that we we shut down and give ourselves a rest time off. What I did at Christmas last year was I, I sat with a book, went through all the scraps of paper, all the notebooks I had, you know, um, web pages that I'd saved online, all this stuff that had been sitting there for a year and, you know, almost stressing me out because I never got a chance to go back and look at it. So I sat down and pretty much wrote a full notebook of ideas, thoughts, you know, topics, all of that. And and Julie and I, when we started this year, I'm like, got this notebook. Here are some of my ideas. What do you think? And it just helped us because, you know, we had a social media plan from it. Um, Some infographics have come, designs. You know, there was a lot of stuff that that I was able to capture. I find that I'm not reading books so much now um i i um, have a a list of uh books i should be reading but i'm not um but i'm i'm learning from others too so um often julie and i will share videos that we've seen or you'll be looking at online training um you know we even talk with our clients and it's like oh what is this product tell us more about what it does you know do you use it to your you know maximum effectiveness etc so we're really looking at um, live examples as we're working through our year um, on what we can learn, how we can grow, etc. So I think that capturing all of those things that were in my head was the most valuable thing I could have done because it just it started off the year in a in a positive note. And I know Lee that you've had people that talked about journaling before mm-hmm. um, and things like that. Writing down it doesn't always happen fluidly for people and and it's okay that that doesn't happen so it's finding how it works best for you and I found you know after I wrote everything down I felt so much better about it but then you know I've got to do that again at the end of this year <laughs> because I've got so much other stuff to look through um, but I think it's finding ways that work for you rather than thinking you must do it a particular way um, yeah it's finding your own comfort zone but also here's the thing I say is it's feeling uncomfortable being comfortable mm. and I think one other thing I mean this I mean I, I, this goes with me everywhere my, my notebook is with me 24 um, 7 and if I'm thinking of something I'll jot it down on my daily my daily action points for the day and it's a great point you touched on first Julie was, was looking at the sort of networking because you get training and knowledge from that networking yeah. I mean mm-hmm. if you do it consistently and with perseverance you pick up some great knowledge bits and pieces that you get from other people. 
Yeah. You know, that, that's one of the big ones. And especially when you look at the, the self-reflection as well, Louisa, it's actually taking a step out. Self-reflection is such a gift that many business owners don't take. They grab with both hands and run forward. And before they know it, six months, 12 months, a year and a half and two years have just literally gone by. But they've had no chance to self-reflect and look at what's working, what needs some work and what you can add into it and make it even more galvanized and stronger. So some really good points there, especially looking at sort of like how you can embrace those learning techniques that you've picked up from networking. We have one other thing, Lee, that might be interesting to to your audience. Um, Julie and I have a monthly tracker um, and it's it's we talk about business positives and negatives Mm -hmm. and we also talk about personal positives and negatives so every month we go through and write it out because after six months or a year you never remember those details of what happened so it's it's a word document and we use it to help write our annual report etc you know something as simple as that can really help you it takes what Julie 10 minutes a a month to to go back and fill it in um and it helps us reflect as well on, you know, we are tracking the negatives. We're tracking what went wrong, um, what we felt mm. um, also at the time. And, and it just makes it easier for us moving forward that we can reflect on, you know, what happened, you know, the disaster that was happening near one was we put the wrong phone number on a business card. You know, <laughs> we have that, but we can, we can write blogs about it and talk about, you know, our small disasters that we felt in business that, you know, it's, it's minor. But at the time for us, you know, we documented it and moved on. So I think for for um, your audience, you know, it helps to just kind of keep even simple notes about the positives and negatives mm-hmm. of business, even if it's just for you. No one else has to know about it. Um, I, yeah, I started it because I was thinking about, you know, when we've got a big shiny um, office that they have a timeline on the wall and you're going up and down and up and down. I was like, oh, I need to do that because I'll never remember. Yeah. It's a good point to, to look at that as well. And I think when we get, to, I would recommend everybody who's watching and listening to reach out to Louisa and to Julie and uh, find out about that tracker and then yeah. see if you can share some information on that as well in sure. a one-on-one meeting. So but what's what's next for yourselves, Julie and Louisa? Uh, what, what's around the corner? What's the next door of opportunity for you? Uh, what's the next chapter of the book? I'm not going to throw any more in there. <laughs> I think, I mean, we'll continue refining our Ninja Belt offering. Um, you know, we want to ensure that they're hitting the mark for, for what is required and refining an online course that we refined this summer. That was our first time, um, you know, developing a course. We learned a lot about it, you know, and that was about starting a business and we're going to refine it and and release it again to a wider network because it was very tailored to the Netherlands um, so we learned a lot, you know, even podcasting, we're very interested in, in growing that, but, um, I think, uh, I panicked a bit. <laughs> <laughs> um, what did you panic for? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> pra- I need a practice. We've had good practice this year too. <laughs> yeah, I think we're in safe hands today. Um, and as my workload allows and as I'm allowed, I will continue to network. Um, I've been uh, working with a group up in Amsterdam, a Facebook group with over 12,000 members um, to start an entrepreneur group. So we had our first meeting last month. Um, so looking to develop that network and others in Holland, um, which is lacking in networking opportunities. Yeah. So this has been an ongoing thing pre the, the P words, the pandemic. Um, and people are wanting it, you know, like we said before about if you're a business owner working on your own, where do you go to bounce off ideas to just sense check things? Um, and networking is a great opportunity. And that's something that really is, is you know, needs developing over here. It is indeed. I think it's what many people, and you, you hear what I speak about quite regularly is, is networking is my industry. And I think it's an untapped area of resource. Mm-hmm. Um, it's an untapped area of your marketing structure. It should be part and parcel of your business plan, yeah. networking in general, because you're promoting the brand that is you, most importantly, regularly and consistently. Mm-hmm. Um, for everyone who's watching and listening today, how can they make contact with yourself, Julie, and your good self, Louisa? How can they make it easy to organize that refreshing virtual cup of coffee and have a catch up with both of you. <laughs> yeah. So check us out on our website, blueninja.eu, or via our social media channels, YouTube, LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. 
Um, and now via this podcast, something we've been wanting to do for a very long time. So thank you for having us. Yeah, and we're happy to have a 30 minute phone call with anyone just to discuss your challenges and see if there's a ninja that can help you. Um, you know, we love talking to business owners, even if you just want to talk through an idea, you know, we'd love to have a chat. So, um, and we are a very open and, um, you know, engaging uh, group of women, <laughs> so a <laughs> group too, um, but we'd love to have a chat and, and uh, you know, just sort of find out what you might be stressing about too you know 30 minutes is is enough time to to get past something that you've been niggling at for a while so you know please approach us for a call and, and we'd be happy to meet you brilliant thank you much louisa thank you julie it's always time everybody to stick the kettle on virtually wise have a cup of coffee and a biscuit and then that are about the things that are troubling you about your business or things that can actually help and support and build your business as well so um it just remains for me to say a massive thank you to Louisa and for Julie for joining us today on Revitalize Meets. Thank you very much for your time today, ladies. I really appreciate it. And I wish you all the very best with your future endeavors across the pond. Yeah, over in the Netherlands. I think that'll work okay. Um, and thank you very much to everybody who's been watching and listening today. And as always, please reach out to Louisa and Julie and make that connection. It's quite easy to do. You've just got to make the move to do it. So mm -hmm. as always, stay tuned for many more Revitalize Meets podcast interviews coming very, very soon online, either on the YouTube channel or on the Anchor channel. You can subscribe to both channels to hear what's coming up. I'll always, there's an opportunity for me to meet many business entrepreneurs, business professionals, key influencers from across the global business network. As always, to everybody, stay safe, keep healthy, and remember, keep connecting everybody. See you all very soon. Bye-bye for now. Thank you. Bye. Bye.